Hey everybody, it's Mama J, and I bought some more vinyl. Not Funko, but record albums. Stick around and see what I got. Alright guys, we are here with part four to that big box of albums you've seen at the beginning, right? I've shown you all the other albums. There was a total of 15 albums, 14 that I paid for because one was a gift. And before shipping, my total was like 60 bucks. I got a major deal from this seller. Again, virtual auctioneer on whatnot. He sent me a little note. Um, well, his name's Ralph, but either way, um, great guy, great box, great packaging, amazing packaging, and a gift. I didn't even expect and even had it all wrapped up. I unwrapped it because I was confused by what it was. <laughs> you know, I guess um, I should have looked a little bit more before I was like, what is this? You know, but either way, let me show you why I started buying this lot to begin with. Bought this lot and the two albums that I wanted, one was a dollar and one was two dollars. Yeah, one was a dollar and one was two dollars. And I would have paid way more than that for that. But the $2 one, we'll start with that one, was Boom, Working Class Dog by Rick Springfield. That right there is Ron. He was Rick Springfield's dog. Obviously, this album is from many, many years ago. The dog has since passed away. Um, but that was Ron, and he actually was Rick Springfield's dog. There's Rick looking good. Sadly, they got something on his face right there. And it is actually like, like tape or something that pulled the picture off. But that's all right, still a pretty cool album. And boom, the cover, this is pretty cool on one side. No lyrics. Oh, well actually there is lyrics on the back side. Let's see, I'm picking up my baby tonight. All right. I've done everything for you. Yep, that's what the lyrics are. I've done everything for you. Doesn't have that listed anywhere, but that is the uh, the song. Um, this is coming apart, but hey, at least it's still here with the album, so I'm not complaining. So let me put this back into where it goes. Um, and also, if you look right here, it looks like staplers, or maybe they had a pet rat. I don't know. <laughs> it looks more like staplers, like, you know, uh, like someone's sitting there poking it, or a bird. It looks like a bird pecked at it, the way it looks. Now the next album cost me a whole whopping dollar. And first of all, back to Rick Springfield. I have seen Rick Springfield in concert many, many times. I have said before, I could not give you a number. I'd have to guess. And every time I guess is gonna be high because I know I have seen him many, many times. I know that growing up from about the age of 13 till, I don't know, maybe 40 or so, we used to go see him at least once to twice a year, if not more. I know when he was stationed in Vegas, we went like five times that year to Vegas to see actually him in a concert, and then we went to a birthday celebration for him, and then we went to... Uh, see the EFX show, which is what he was in, three different times. So, but that's pretty cool to add this. I love Rick Springfield. Again, I have met him uh, multiple times. I do have pictures with him. I always say I'll include them. Boom. Nope. Boom. But then I forget. Hopefully I won't forget. I'll put it there. If not, well, just pretend you see it. Woohoo. Anyways, um, so again, that's Rick Springfield. But the next one was Sean Cassidy. Now, Sean Cassidy was my very first concert. I was about seven years old, and we went and seen Sean Cassidy. I was in love with Sean Cassidy. Um, he is the brother to David Cassidy, which is from the Partridge family. Also, Shirley Jones, who was on the Partridge family, is his mother. So, you know, he obviously a family of celebrities, okay? Um, Jack Jack Cassidy, I think his name was, was their dad. So, but pretty, pretty cool album to add to my collection. Very first concert I ever seen in, which makes that funny. 
is this right here is the very first concert I ever took Spectre to. I took him to see Rick Springfield for his very first concert and he was about six or seven. And this was my first concert and I was about seven years old. <laughs> you know what's funny is what I remember about that concert, because obviously, you know, at seven, what am I gonna really remember? I remember that we were sitting there and he had a lot of plants on the stage. Not like flowers, but plants. Like in what looked to be clay pots, you know? And I vaguely remember him chucking those into the audience. And I remember asking my mother, hey, you know, did that happen? You know, because I mean, come on, I was seven. That was a long time ago. And my mom said, yeah. And I think she goes, the reason you probably remember is because me and Nita, which was her best, still her best friend, um, they've been best friends since junior high or something. Um, her and her daughter had also went with us to the concert. And she said that uh, they had discussed him throwing these clay pots and the fact that imagine if he would have nailed somebody in the head with one of those. Right? That's crazy. Now, you know, the thing is, is he is touring. I actually brought up to my mom about possibly going to see him. Rick's touring. Rick always tours. But, you know, getting to go see Sean Cassidy, I said it would be funny if I made that, which I would not at this age, but if I made that my last concert ever, it would be my, I came in listening to Sean and I went out listening to Sean, right? But anyways, really, really happy to add this. Now on to the last album I got here, which was the one wrapped up and I was unaware why it was wrapped up and I opened it up not realizing. And it was one of the albums that he had put up um, a little bit before I had joined the auction and when I went back and I looked at his list I seen that he had already passed that because they were numbered by lot okay and I am um, at the end I said hey is there any way you can rerun that one and he's like oh you know check me out on my next auction I'll rerun it then and I was like all right you know because I know I always try to check out I work a lot of hours but I try to check them out so I thought okay I'll catch it around if not I'll get it again but it is one of my favorite albums by this artist Funko, give me a pop, okay? Um, but I love, love this artist. She is one of my favorite female singers, rock and roll singers. Uh, definitely rates in the top, hands down. Very, very hard to stand next to this woman, in my opinion. Voice-wise, there are a few, but I'm, I have my few that are up there in the top, and she is one of them, and that is Pat Benatar. And get nervous. Get Nervous is one of my favorite albums. I got a funny story about this. I remember, oh, no lyrics, just some info. I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I remember when this tour came out, I think I was in junior high, if I remember correctly. And, um, okay, it looks like it says 1982, which would have made me about 12 years old. So probably about 12, 13 when she was in tour for this, so I was probably just in junior high, and I remember that my mother had only bought two tickets. She had a really hard time getting the tickets, and she was able to get two of them. Normally, when my parents get concert tickets, the way it works is my dad really likes them, my mother could care less, or my mother really likes them, and my dad could care less. So growing up, I was the one who always got to go, as to why I have been to so many concerts, okay? But my parents were both fans of Pat Benatar, so when she got tickets for this tour, they both went. So I didn't get to go. And this is one of my favorite Pat Benatar albums, okay? At that time, it was probably not one of my favorites, but throughout time, this has, this is, you know, rates in definitely top Pat Benatar albums for me. I love a lot of Pat Benatar, but this one. Anyways, my mother had got a shirt. Back then, they weren't regular t-shirts, if you're old enough to remember. Back in the 80s, we had things called jerseys, which are kind of like sports, I guess, t-shirts. I don't know. But the arm came like right here, and they hung a little lower, and the, the collar and the, el the shoulder part and the sleeves were all one color, while the shirt was usually a different color. Like this would be black or blue, and this would be white, you know? Um, that was the bad part is a lot of them, this front part and back part of the t-shirt part were white. But I do remember my mother had got a jersey for her and we were approximately the same size. And I said to my mom, I said, well, you at least can let me wear your shirt to school because I wanted to be cool and wear the Pat Benatar shirt, right? 
I mean, you know, come on. And uh, my mom's like, oh yeah, sure, when pigs fly, I'll let you wear the shirt, right? Because she goes, I just got it. But we had this game, and I don't remember the name of it now. It was called Pig Something. If I can think of the name or come up with it, I'll put it right here. But it had like these little tiny pigs, and you rolled those instead of dice. And depending on how they landed, there were very different things from like making bacon to, you know, <laughs> I mean, depending on the pose they landed in. Anyways, my mother had said when pigs fly. So I went, took one of the pigs out of the game, and walked into the front room and went, all right, that pig just flew. My mother laughed, gave me the shirt, and told me I better not get anything on it. <laughs> so I did get to wear the shirt the very next day to school, obviously. But still, again, I can't thank you enough. I love this album, love, love this album. This right here is a big score for me to be in my collection. So I was so happy when I seen that he sent it to me as a gift. And uh, Funko, please give me a Pat Benatar pop, please. I'd also like a Sean Cassidy pop. And if you didn't know, Sean Cassidy was in a TV show um, back in the 70s with Parker, Parker Stevens, I believe his name was. And it was called The Hardy Boys. So you can give us Hardy Boys pops. And Rick Springfield, come on. Jesse's girl would like a Rick Springfield pop, and so would I. All right, let me know what you guys think of these albums. Are any of these your favorites? Because these are three big time favorites for me, from my first concert to Spectre's first concert, to the person I've seen the most in concert, to my one of my favorite female rockers, and my favorite album by her. So let me know what you think. Do you like any of these? Leave me a comment down below. Smash the like button. Also, stick around. Check out my Patreons. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.